In this chapter of the book, we will learn about exponential smoothing. Now, this is a framework proposed in the early, uh, in the late 1950s by Brown, Holt, and Winters. And it has actually motivated a lot of successful forecasting methods. Um, the idea is that our forecasts are generated by a weighted average of which the weights of that weighted average decay exponentially as your observations get older. So basically more recent observations matter more and hence we're going to weigh those more than what uh, further uh, their observations in the in the distant past. As you'll see as we're going through subsequent sections of the book, the methods build to uh, account for data with trend and seasonal component. In this particular section of the book, 8.1, we will think about simple exponential smoothing. So let's get into it. Suppose we have a time series, Y1 to YT, and we want to generate some forecasts for this time series. Now let's think about the some of the benchmarks that we spoke about in chapter five, and think about random walk forecasts. Think about the naive forecast. Hence our forecasts are given by what I observed last. Let's consider a different approach and consider the mean function or the average forecast. So we're going to average our forecast and that will be our forecast for the future. So thinking about the weights and thinking about considering past observations, these two forecasts take two extremes into account. The random walk forecast only considers what I last saw. That's the only thing that matters. The average forecast considers all the history that I've seen with equal weight. So everything matters equally. You, you can imagine that what we want is something between these. We want to take history into account, but we care more about recent history than past history. So we want to weigh recent observations more than what we're going to weigh uh, observations in the distant past. And that's what exactly what exponential, simple exponential smoothing does. Here's the forecast equation of it. So my one step ahead forecast is a weighted average of yt, yt minus one, yt minus two. And these are the weights where alpha is what we call the smoothing coefficient is between zero and one. So if you think about these weights and let's graphically sort of graph them so we can visualize these. Um, time is on my x-axis and weight is on my y-axis. As um, we're going back into the past, my weights exponentially decay because alpha is between zero and one. Okay? So as we're going back into the past, the weights get smaller. I put less weight on that observation. Let's have a look at some examples of specific alpha values. So uh, for an alpha of 0.8, let's start with the highest value. I'm going to weigh my last observation, yt, by 0.8, the one before that by 0.16, the one before that by 0.032, and very quickly I get to zero. So the higher the alpha, the quick that exponential decay is. The lower the alpha, the slower that exponential decay is. So the lower the alpha, the more I account, the more I take into account uh, the past observations, the distant past. Here's an example. We'll talk about this, uh, what we're going to see in the picture in more detail in the next couple of slides. But I have Algerian exports of goods and services uh, as a percentage of GDP. And this black line is my data. Now, this blue line is out is what, um, what is called the level. Now, we'll talk about that in the next slide. Or let's think about these as fitted values. And these are depicted, these fitted values are driven by what alpha, what alpha we, 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 what alpha value will be. Okay. So this is, we're going to do this as, as an animation. Notice that as alpha increases, this blue line moves, this blue line becomes more responsive. Okay. So remember, if we go back to the previous slide, Okay, as alpha increases, I'm putting more weight to um, the recent observations. As alpha decreases, I'm taking a longer average. Hence, I see a smoother 
uh, set of fitted values. Okay. So let's continue with that. Okay, so as alpha increases, um, the more recent past matters. So if alpha is equal to one, okay, let's go back to the previous slide. If alpha is equal to one, nothing else matters. It's just the previous observation, so random walk, okay? So let's go to this where alpha now is close to one. Okay, so this fitted uh, value is what I previously observed. Okay, this is my one step in sample value. It's what I previously observed. Okay, so we've seen the forecast equation of simple exponential smoothing. The traditional way of, uh, of representing these, there's three alternative ways. This one is the component form. So each exponential smoothing method has a forecast equation and at least one smoothing equation. The forecast equation comprises the, the, how we forecast, how we generate forecasts. And the smoothing equation, at least all of them have got a level. So what is the level? The level is the smooth value of that time series. So you, that blue line that we saw before, okay? Now, my one step ahead fitted values are a weighted average of my observation and the previous fitted value. Or you can think about the forecast equation that I had there. So my fitted values in sample are a weighted average of what I see previously. They're equivalent. If I generate H steps ahead forecasts, my forecasting function is flat, is the last smoothing value that I've fitted or my last fitted value. And that continues into the future. I can actually take this form and iterate it, substitute uh, iteratively in it, and I end up with the weighted average form. And this is what we started off with. This forecast equation was actually a weighted average form. Hence, this is the second equivalent representation of this, the weighted average form. So my one step ahead forecast is equal to a weighted average of my past observations plus some initial value. I need to start this process at some point, okay? So my forecasts are depicted by two things, my alpha smoothing coefficient and my initial value. Hence, I need to somehow choose these parameters. Now, the way we're going to choose these parameters is similar to uh, regression. We're going to minimize sum of squared errors. Now, the difference with regression is in regression, we have closed form solution. We know what the estimator is. Here, we cannot do that. So we need to rely on numerical optimization. So we're going to use optimization. And I is the function that we're going to use is very, very quick in doing this. And we're going to say minimize sum of squared errors uh, by changing alpha and, and L naught. And let me know what those values are. Now, for the previous example that we did, the Algerian exports example, the optimal alpha is 0.84, and the optimal L0 initial value is 39. Okay, so here's, um, again, fitted values, or the, the L, the level, uh, with three different alphas. So alpha is equal to zero. If alpha is equal to zero, if we go back to this equation here, the weighted average form, if alpha is equal to zero, all this cancels out. The only thing that remains is this initial value. So the only thing that matters is the initial value. And the best value for the initial value is to actually, to minimize sum of squares is, is actually to take an average. Hence, my forecast is the average. So everything in the past matters in the same way. Um, if on the other extreme, if alpha is equal to one, we're going to get the naive forecast. Now the optimal alpha was 0.84. So this forecast here is a weighted average uh, well, is a weighted average of the past observations with alpha being 0.84. So that's the that's the weight of the last observation. The observation before that will have 0.84 times 1 minus 0.84 and so on. Okay, so that alpha will decay quite quickly, that weight. Now, how do we estimate this in, in R? How do we fit simple exponential smoothing in R? So the data set I'm looking at is uh, the comes from the global economy symbol, and I'm pulling out Algeria, so Algerian economy. Um, now, the general form of 
estimate exponential smoothing uh, methods is we, we're going to use this model function and we're going to depict the exponential smoothing uh, methods by this ETS, um, ETS function. Now, ETS stands for error, trend, and seasonal, and we're going to talk about this in detail in chapter in section 8.5 of this textbook. For the moment, let's think about um, each exponential smoothing method having an error, a trend component, and a seasonal component. With simple explanation, well, all of them have an error, and some of them have trend, and some of them have seasonal. With seasonal exponential smoothing, sorry, with simple exponential smoothing, we don't have a trend component, and we don't have a seasonal component. Hence, we're just going to use the, the error. We'll talk about what this um, represents in more detail when we get to section 8.5 of the book. At the moment, let's take this as sort of given that to estimate a simple exponential smoothing, um, uh, to estimate simple exponential smoothing and generate forecast from it, we're going to use the ETS function. Um, and all we need to depict is that the error is additive. Hence, it returns the smoothing coefficient of 0.84, the alpha, and the initial value. Now, um, we can actually take this um, uh, Mabel. So this will be in the Mabel, and we can. Uh, I've reported on the Mabel, hence I get uh, what uh, what is the parameters of interest in the Mabel. I can take the Mabel and actually um, grab the components of them and and plot them. So it is a little bit like the composition. In the first panel here, we have the data itself, and then we're going to have the level and the remainder. Okay. Um, here we have, we can look at the components, the actual components instead of plotting them. And what I'm going to do is actually left join these with the fitted values. So the components themselves are the first few columns here. The, this last column is actually the fitted values. Now I've done this to show you that the fitted value, so we start the process at L0. The first fitted value is L0. The second fitted value um, is of course L1 and so on. So my fitted values in general, yt plus one conditional t is equal to LT. Okay. To generate forecasts, I take the Mabel and I pass it into the forecast function. Here I'm forecasting, I'm generating a five steps ahead forecast. Now, what you've seen so far is, uh, is an exponential smoothing algorithm that generates point forecasts. Here we have some prediction intervals, and these prediction intervals come from the models that we're going to talk about in section 8.5. So let's ignore these for the moment and think about this um, line of point forecasts that come from this. Um, let me go back to the weighted average form from this weighted average form uh, uh, formula. 